Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at App Game Kit Studio. Now I looked at this one when it was first being released, we're going to take a quick revisit of it. It's a very easy to use 2D game engine, and it's built on App Game Kit, which has been around for ages. And the reason why we're looking at it is because right now, over on Fanatical, you can get it super, super cheap. So we're going to take a check it out, see if this is the right engine for you. But first, a little bit about Fanatical. Uh, it's available right here, fanatical.com. If you use the code Game From Scratch 10 on anything, you get an additional 10% off and the prices we are talking about today are dirt cheap so there's three bundles going on right now that you should be interested in first one is the app game kit uh, bundle 2 this is what we are checking out today it's specifically app game kit studio which is this guy right here and the media pack but it's also built on top of app game kit I'll explain a little bit of that in the past so you can get app game kit their VR add-on and a whole bunch of assets as well um, for what is it like uh, $10 US with 10% off, so for like 9 bucks, or you can get a little bit less and save down for like $5, you're still going to get to the, oh no, to get the app Game Kit Studio, you gotta get it to the top tier. Uh, there's also Game Guru's bundle going on, Game Guru Max is in development right now, by the way, but it comes with Game Guru and a ton of assets available as well. I've done a video on Game Guru if you want to go ahead and check that one out. And then finally, completely unrelated, they're also running the Mighty Game Music Pocket Pack, a bunch of royalty-free music, things like ambient nature, cinematic music, and so on. Pretty straightforward, a little bit of a, like it's a small bundle there, but we're talking like uh, three bucks US and you can take another 10% off for that using the code game from scratch 10. So that is it for the bundles. Let's get into the hands-on segment. And that means jumping into App Game Kit. Now this is App Game Kit. This is built on top of, here, let me go back here and make this not full screen so you can see my, all right, here we go. So you can see my actual, um, start bar at the bottom here. Uh, again, there's App Game Kit, which is a kind of a basic type programming language and a C slash C++ layer underneath it. So there's tier one, which is their built-in programming language, which is really easy to use, and tier two, which is C++ level stuff. I'm not gonna cover that today. I've done a, a closer look series on App Game Kit back, I think in 2015, uh, but you can just think of it as it's got hundreds and hundreds or hundreds of commands for doing 2D and simple 3D game development. And here you can see one of the examples you are getting from it. Now, App Game Kit Studio is built on top of App Game Kit. Studio uses the same programming language, but what it gives you is you this simple IDE environment. And some of it is great, some of it is not so great. Here you can see we've brought in all of the various different assets you're getting in the Mega Pack, which by the way, as far as I can tell, you can use these assets in other projects. So you see here a number of different um, pieces available here. Uh, you get previews of them down here. Now, there are things I find stupid. For example, I can't just drag and drop assets into my project. Uh, although, when we are using this in studio mode to create levels, oddly enough, you can, which we will showcase in just a second. But if you want to go ahead and grab some assets out of here, we can do so like so. So let's go to the giant asset pack, content, and here's an isometric town. So I'm going to go ahead, grab the isometric town, the double sized version, and we'll just open this up and show this in Explorer. And what we'll do is take all of this content and then we'll go over here. We're gonna create a new project, file, new project, uh, demo town, c colon slash temp slash agk slash demo. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll create that project like so. Go to the media folder, show it in Explorer and open the media directory and we'll paste our assets in. So that is how you go ahead and use and bring in assets. Pretty straightforward on the whole. Um, now go back over here. Here, let's get that off screen to our media and you'll see all of those assets are available. Now you can do some pretty straightforward stuff. So here you can see the code design. Um, let me just zoom that in so you can see it. So uh, it's just basically a straight out simple number of commands. So what you're doing here, set the title, set the window. This is what coding is always like. And then you're just doing basically a simple game loop, printing out the um, screens FPS and synchronizing what you're doing. And that is it. That's how simple it is to work with this guy. You do now get drag and drop here. So if I select a sprite here, so we want to go ahead, let's grab one of these car sprites. I could add that into my game world basically by bringing it, dragging it over here. And what that does is loads the sprite like so. And now I need to create a sprite. So, and you're seeing I'm getting code completion there. Everything is integer based. So that, that result over here is just an image index. So I just go ahead and do my create sprite. As you're seeing, I'm getting full code completion. Car two, like so. So now I just created the sprite like that. Go ahead and run our project. There is our sprite. It, and it's it's quite that simple. That's how you kind of work with this guy. Very straightforward and clean code. The, the pr approach is really quite simple in the way that it works. And then I can do things like set sprite 
And then you could do things like move it around X. I could angle it, uh, change the speed, and so on. So here we go. We'll set sprite X uh, to um, XVal, comma, zero. So what we're going to do is move it. So we just go up here, XVal equals zero. Uh, and then each pass through our frame, we'll go XVal equals XVal plus one. All right, so there you go. Simple, straightforward. Go ahead and run that. Oops, sprite zero does not exist. That's because I did not actually send in the sprite. So I just go here. We'll pass in our sprite as the so sprite index. And oh, set sprite. We're, we're just moving the X. I'm being stupid. All right, here, we'll just move the X. So you pass in the sprite to move and the amount to move it by. And we'll go ahead and run that. And there you see our thing moving. Pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, the frame count is being is being capped. You'll notice that's up here. We can get rid of that if we want, or if we want to make it 60 frames per second. Or we could just change that out to 60 frames per second, no problem. Now, there are a couple things I really kind of like about App Game Kit. For one, it is about the easiest way to get something published on your phone, for example. Let me just show you here. So this is my phone. I'm running the App Game Kit app right here on my phone. Now what I could do is over here, I could go here, just click the broadcast button. And we'll head on back over to my phone. And there you see the mirroring of my actual physical Samsung phone. Uh, there is my code running on it. So that's actually pretty cool. It's one of the easiest ways to deploy on a device. App Game Kit itself, um, as part, if you'll notice back in the bundle. So right here, we're also getting add-ons. So you get sound libraries, you're getting shaders, you're getting virtual reality as well. This is all for the base App Game Kit. Well, App Game Kit Studio builds on top of all of those things. Now there's another aspect to App Game Kit Studio, in addition to just being a code editor, and by the way, also has integrated help. So I can pick whatever I want, hit F1, you get the help up over here. Uh, there's also a number of guides and so on. So if I come here at home, guide, you get things that'll walk you through all the aspects of working with this guy. Um, but what you can also do is create levels. So I'll go here to my demo game and I'm gonna go ahead and create add new scene to project. And um, my scene, like so. So we just created a new scene. And now what you've got is basically a visual scene creation tool. Now it's not the, the most advanced you've ever seen, but it does have decent uh, functionality. Uh, so there's no isometric projection, for example. Uh, snapping is minimalistic, no tile set stuff here. But what it allows you to do is I can come down here, pick my media stuff, and I can basically just start building a game world. And you can resize things accordingly. So if I want, I can just basically come in and start, you know, putting things in as I want. So there, I've got multiples. Uh, you can control the Z order of things this way. Uh, so it makes things go in front or behind accordingly. You can also have various different layers in. Uh, you have another couple of the options for this guy as well. So for example, let's drop this pylon in here. So you got uh, properties for it over here. Uh, I can go ahead and say, yeah, let's turn physics on for that guy. We'll make this guy a dynamic body. All right, there we go. So now we have physics enabled for this guy. I'll come down here, I'll turn physics on for this guy as well, but I'll keep it as static and simulate. Oh, <laughs> okay, I didn't actually load my game in. So I just went ahead, I created my scene. So how do we go ahead and use the scene? Well, I'm gonna come back over here, app game kit, and we just do pound include uh, my scene dot scene, like so. So now our scene is available to us. Uh, we need to initialize it. So my scene, and now we just call a setup on it. So my scene setup, like so. And now your scene will be in the scene. There's one other thing you do with your scene. So it's just my scene sync, like so. And then boom. We go ahead and run that. There you see, we now have our scene is integrated in, it's interacting with the physics and so on. So that is the studio side of things. You do get this simple 2D style level editor with uh, editing available to it. Now, interestingly enough, once you've done that, uh, once you're working with the scene files, so I go over here to a scene, I can actually now start bringing in assets directly from down here, which I don't fully understand, but you can do so. You can do out of your media or out of here when working in scenes, just not with your own projects. And you can't, for some strange reason, again, just drag something up, which is really dumb. I kind of, that, that function I just should be default. But other than that, it's a decent experience. Another thing to notice about scenes is they're actually script generators. 
So at any time you can come in here and actually check out the this, this script that's being generated for it. And it's just code. It, it's more app game kit style code being generated behind the scenes. This is not a project that you should be editing. Uh, you should be pulling it into your own code uh, using the pound include support. But that's how you could bring that stuff in. Now a cool thing we can also do is we can bring in uh, 3D, no problem at all. So here you can see I've created an earlier project. I'll set that as my active project. So just go over here, demo 3D. This is a simple 3D project. I brought in um, a long sword model from uh, one of these things, the 3D asset pack, uh, by the way, 3D asset pack, and it's broken down into categories. So we got horror and so on. Anything, by the way, you can pick a model like so, and then you can actually drop in. So that's the diffuse texture and the normal map. You can drop them in and see a preview of them right there. I imported a couple of these into my game. So if I go into the media folder, you'll see I have the long sword model and two textures available for it. Here is the code to work with 3D. So basically, oh, this, this is not my code. There we go. This is my code. This is the modified code. So here you can see what is required to make a 3D model up and go. So we're setting the clear color so it screen, clears the screen to black. We load our two, um, two textures and our 3D object. We apply them, set the normal map, set a position, set a scale, rotate the camera, on keys handle thing, otherwise we rotate every single frame in the loop. And you go ahead and run this, and here you can see there is a long sword rotating in 3D with camera controls. So it takes about, I don't know, 15 lines of code with spaces and comments removed to load up a 3D model. By the way, you do have uh, support here of certain degrees to drag and drop. So if you need to bring in these textures, for example, I come over here, media. So I want to bring an object in. It knows it's a 3D object and automatically calls the appropriate functions. So there you see, that is App Game Kit Studio. App Game Kit Studio can be thought of as a superset of App Game Kit. So all of the functionality and plugins and add-ons you are getting here in this bundle, all of this stuff, the App Game Kit stuff and the assets will all work with App Game Kit Studio as well. So uh, it, it's an interesting niche. It's again, one of, with the broadcast functionality, it's one of the ways to run and test on a phone that I've ever seen. Uh, it's a very simple thing. You may, oh, why would I use this over Godot? It's easier than Godot. Why would I use this over um, Game Maker? It's easier than Game Maker. It's literally one of the easiest options out there. It's not gonna be for everyone. It is very code heavy. There are, again, the studio tools. We have things like a simple level scene editor here um, that, let me go back to 2D view here. So you can you can compose scenes pretty straightforward and easy. You got your scene manager over here. Again, you can instantiate out from there as well. You have tools for placing things and rotating things and so on, but it is relatively simple. But this ultimately is a code generator that you can access pretty straightforward in your own code. So again, simplicity is the key of the day. And the, the number of commands in this guy, let me see if I can actually find the commands easy enough. Uh, commands. You get an idea, broke it down into categories. So for example, if you needed to do math, we got those particular math functions. Uh, you're working with sprites. Here you can see the number of different functions that are available for sprites. It's just sort of a simple way of doing things. Everything is straightforward. So when you load something, you just get an integer index to handle it. And then you pass that index into the various different calls. Once you've kind of figured the basics out, it works quite nicely. Now, again, there are other options out there. I would say probably the closest analog in some ways, oddly enough, is Raylan. But if you don't wanna deal with the complexities of C, uh, this is a nice choice. Uh, now, th there are a couple downsides. They do have this habit of abandoning one project to go work on another one. That's just sort of the story of indie game engines, it seems. But here you're getting, you're getting an absolute ton of content here. And this is just the mega pack installed. If you go back to the actual bundle itself, you're gonna find uh, you got 3D assets pack here, shader pack. Um, the mega pack might be, a du no, I don't think it is a duplication of those. Then you get the VR stuff as well. And then do keep in mind, there is also a Game Guru bundle going as well. Game Guru is kind of like this, but for 3D games with using Lua scripting. I've done hands-on with it as well. And then once again, remember, there is the Mighty Game Music pocket pack for sale as well. But that there, ladies and gentlemen, is App Game Kit. It's not new, it's not cutting edge, it's uh, interesting, it's easy, and it might be right up your alley, or you might despise it with all of your heart. But if you've ever thought about picking it up, this is quite literally the cheapest you're going to get it. Let's go check out uh, Steam App Game Kit. Now, it's, it's pretty consistently on sale on Steam, uh, but even then, your sale price is going to be substantially more than this. So what we're looking at App Game Kit is uh, 60 bucks, the full kit with studio, uh, 153 bucks. 
So basically what you're getting here, this bundle right here, this $10 bundle, which by the way, gave for scratch 10, you should another 10% off that, uh, $9 bundle, uh, or the whole thing again is $153 on for the equivalent. Oh no, I guess this has a little bit more. So it's not apples to apples, but you get an idea uh, of the savings you're getting in this particular bundle. It's pretty solid. So App Game Kit, not gonna be for everyone, uh, but it, it is. it fills a niche for sure. And that niche is simple, easy to use. By the way, once again, I never really cover it here. There is a C library version of it. So all of those commands, everything you saw uh, available over here, they're also available as a C function. So you can use this guy uh, like you would use like um, an SDL or a Raylib or an SFML or that kind of thing. And it can also be used as a C-based library. All right, that is it. App Game Kit Studio, also Game Guru and a very small uh, audio pack available over on Fanatical uh, for about a month, I think. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. And don't forget to use the code. Uh, I do get a small commission, by the way, if you do use this stuff. And thank you so much for doing so. Uh, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.